this chapter, we will set up your computer so you're ready for Python programming. Now, I have a preferred way that I like to set up my machine, especially for beginners, but it may not be what your instructor prefers. Because of this, I will default this lesson and the setup to them. This is especially useful because setup and configuration can depend on things like which OS do you have? Do you have a Mac, Windows, or Linux? Which tools or applications do you want to use? For example, VS Code or PyCharm or another one. Does the instructor want you to save your code to the cloud using GitHub or just share it locally? And sometimes it just comes down to personal preference. For now, I will list the things you need and the setup I will be using just in case you want to follow along. To start things off, the very first thing you're going to need is Python. Now this should be self-explanatory because you need Python to code with Python, but we want to make sure that we install version 3.8 or higher. We'll start off by opening a browser and navigating to python.org and clicking on downloads, we should see the latest and greatest, which is 3.8.5. Just make sure that you're installing it for your machine. Once installed, we can open it up and just follow the installation wizard. For now, all of the default settings will be perfectly fine. On the Windows side, if you see an option that says Add to Path, make sure that is selected. Once ready, click Install. There we go. It looks like Python 3.8.5 has been installed on my machine. Next up, we're going to be using a GitHub account. Now, GitHub is a repository or version controlling system by Microsoft that allows you to save your code to the cloud so it's easy to share and collaborate with the others. This is a free thing, so let's create one real quick and we'll get right back to it. Now, I already have a GitHub account, so you can see all of the activity and repositories that I have. But for you, once you've completed your setup and the verification with email and whatnot, all you need to do is find this new button to create a new repository. It'll ask for a repository name, and here I think a good idea would be something like Auto Engineering 101, and then give it a really simple description like, This is the code for my class. Now you can change these later, so don't get too worried about the naming or anything. Just make it something descriptive. Make sure that this is set to public. We'll initialize with the readme. And then this git ignore file, let's type Python and make sure that we are telling this repository to use Python. Once all that is set, we can just click that green button, create repository. And let's see the magic happen. Perfect. The last thing we'll do here is just click on this green button here for the code. We'll copy this URL where it says clone with the HTTPS. And really what this means is that we're going to copy this, put it onto our computer, because right now it exists on the internet. We'll put it onto our computer so we can start programming inside of this project and have it be automatically connected and synced with this. So click copy and we're ready for the next piece. All right, we're making some pretty sweet progress, y'all. Good job. Uh, number three is picking a tool to work with Git commands. So we have GitHub, but we need to find a way to work with the cloud repository that we just created. I'm going to be using a tool called Git Kraken, which is also a free tool you can install. But make sure you use the tool that your instructor wants you to use. All right, I'm going to open Git Kraken. Let's see what we get back here. It wants me to sign into my GitHub account, so I'll click sign in with GitHub, click continue authorization, and there we go. It's now set up in Git Kraken, so we'll open that one back up. And you can see that I have a lot of projects and things opened right now. Let me just close all of these. And then I'm going to click clone a repo. So clicking on this, it's going to ask where do I want to clone it to? 
I have this folder called users Carlos Dev. That one works for me. And then we're just going to paste the URL that we copied earlier from our repository. Once you found where you want to clone it to, you paste in the URL and this full path looks good. We can just click clone the repo. Yes, please. And just like that, we're all set with Git Kraken. We'll see all of our changes and things happen right in here. And we'll have a nice clean UI to show us and represent what's happening in our repository and our code. All right, all right. Next step, we have installing PyCharm. PyCharm is an application for Python development. Uh, we also call them IDEs or Integrated Development Environments. Although you can use other tools like a VS Code, for now, please stick with PyCharm because that's what I will be using and it'll make following along so much easier. So back in our browser, I'm going to search for install PyCharm. And there's one right here. The second one works just fine and it takes me to this screen. Now there are two versions, a professional and a community. Make sure that you have your OS selected. In my case, I'm on a Mac, so I'll make sure Mac is selected. But professional is a paid service, so make sure you don't do this blue one. We want to do community, which is free and open source. So click download on community. Thank you for downloading PyCharm. Oh, you're so welcome. Let's wait for this thing to download and we'll go with the installation wizard next. Perfect. Now that it's done, let's click on it to start the installation wizard. On Max, you gotta love this. Click and drag to applications. And then we can simply open up PyCharm. There it is. Yes, we are sure. Please open. I'm going to click don't allow here, but you're more than welcome to allow if you want to. And here we go. We're booting, booting it up. Now, instead of clicking new project, we're going to open a project, which is from our repository. Right? So let's click open here. And I'm going to go to the folder where I saved it. In my case, I called it dev, and here it is. My auto engineering 101, I'm going to open this folder. Now you may not get a bunch of pop-ups like this. I get this because of some add-ons that I have, but you probably see a lot cleaner of UI than mine, and that's okay. If it asks you here, do you wanna add external files? We'll say always add, that's a good thing to do. And there we go, PyCharm is all set and ready to be worked with. Now, number five was to open the repo, but you could see how easy that was now that we had PyCharm. We really just clicked open and then clicked the folder that we had cloned. So that means that the last thing we really need to do is to create a virtual environment. This sounds real fancy, but what this is meant to do is to help us install and manage packages from many other amazing developers around the world that are sharing their code with us. No need to reinvent the wheel. We'll do this by going up to the very top, PyCharm and Preferences. For Windows, it'll probably say Settings. We'll go down here to our project, Project Interpreter. On the far right, we'll have this cogwheel. Let's click on this and add a new virtual environment. Now, I want a new environment this is showing me where it's going to be placed, right in my directory, just where we want it to go. And it's going to call this virtual environment VEMV, virtual environment for short. The next piece is it's trying to use my 3.7, but I want to use the, the Python version that I just barely installed, which is 3.8. So I'm going to click this drop down, and I'm going to find 3.8 instead. Now, you may not have as many versions as I do on my machine, but that's totally okay. For this, just look for your 3.8 that we installed, the second one for me, click on that, and then click OK. Perfect. Last thing to do is to click Apply, 
Click OK. Let PyCharm finish whatever it's doing here, really just indexing in things, and we are all set. Awesome work, everyone. Your machine is now set up. Your project is ready to go. We could basically start programming right now. However, I want to put on the brakes just a little bit because I think we should take a step back, talk about automation engineering, talk about software testing, really understanding what we're trying to do as automation engineers before we just start jumping right into code. So next up, what is automation engineering?